I always figured instead of being like mangled and, you know, limbs lost and things and surviving, I always figured like, well, ew, I'll probably just get killed, you know? Uh, I, I think probably because that's the worst case scenario. You, you know, when you do, when you, war fighting is your job, it's your career. Um, I think you have to be prepared for the worst case scenario. I'm Clint Trial, and um, I'm from San Antonio, Texas, uh, out in the hill country, Bulverde, Texas. So for all my compadres out there, hello. Well, I served first off, uh, joined the Army way back in the early 90s. That didn't really work out for me. I, uh, I didn't really want to be in the Army. So, so I got out and um, uh, had some broken time and then joined the Marine Corps. Uh, so all in all, I have about 22 and a half, almost 23 years uh, active duty. I was 16 and um, I was a not very well behaved kid. Uh, my father kind of saw that and he's like, I'll just channel this energy that he's got and put it towards something that he will probably enjoy. God bless him because he was absolutely right. And, uh, you know, when it came time to jump up, up at altitude, they opened the door. I just remember, like, stepping out onto that little platform above the wheel. And as I grabbed onto the strut, I see a bumper sticker that says, uh, see ya, no refunds. I had jumped quite a bit before I got wounded. And I jumped in Russia uh, a couple hours outside of Moscow. Um, and it's, you know, right after the, the wall had come down, the collapse of communism and everything, we went over there. We jumped out of an Antonov II uh, bush plane. And it was like February. It was like negative 20 degrees out. The Antonov II had like skis on it. And we did a low level static line jump out of it. Uh, and when I say low level, it was 300 feet. You know, I, I remember going back and, and watching the video um, but, you know, it was all VHS and everything back then. You'd go back and rewind the tape, and you, you, I would count from the time I left the aircraft to the time I hit the ground. It was like 11, 12 seconds. I was an instructor at SOTG, which at the time was Special Operations Training Group. And there was this guy coming in that we never really knew. Uh, his name was Clint Trial, and he was coming from Okinawa. My favorite and most accomplished Marine that's graced the U.S. in the last hundred years is probably going trial. He fucking cares and he pays attention to everything. Once I started doing, you know, went through military free fall course, the end state is different. You know, on well, the military side of the house, that, that's a means of getting to work. You know, it's an insert capability. And, you know, I, I had not up until that point utilized skydiving as a, a means to get to work. It was a means to have fun, uh, have a blast, and to learn uh, a hell of a lot more about yourself, which I'm, I'm a big, big believer in that. What happened on January 12th? Oh, yeah, I just, uh, I stepped on the wrong piece of real estate, man, you know? I felt his hand like slap you know, back of my kit. And, um, and all I heard was like, I got you, buddy. And when I felt uh, Kurt grab me, like, it was like, okay, all right, let's, 
Let's fucking do this. The pain is just so completely overwhelming. Like, I wish I would have passed out for it, but I didn't. I stayed awake, uh, you know, through all of it and until I felt the rotor wash uh, of, the, uh, of the helo. Uh, once I felt that wind uh, on my face, I, I think at that point I was like, all right, yeah, I can go to sleep now. <laughs> um, woke up in Bagram and uh, I think my initial thought was, okay, I'm fucked up. Now it was just a question of like, how fucked up am I? So I went down and I, I checked my, my crotch, you know. I was very, very, very lucky. Um, only had one piece of shrapnel go straight through my sack and like, it was like the golden piece of shrapnel, like it didn't hit anything. Um, at that point I hadn't looked down yet, you know. And I remember laying there for a second and I was like, I need to look down, I gotta look down. And I was like, I don't want to look down. It was like, you got to. So I'm having this conversation in my head. And, uh, you know, it, it, I think at some point I was like, it doesn't matter what's down there, or what's not down there. Like, like, this is it. I mean, this is you now. But I remember thinking, like, seeing the white bandages and, you know, nothing down there, nothing down there. I'm like, well, fuck it. Challenge accepted, man. But, you know, like, I knew I, I knew it was going to be okay. Um, yeah, just uh, I think I was more concerned with my like, Casey. Oh, I should I shouldn't let you stop. Oh, <laughs> wait, wait a second. Uh, I think I would have been. I felt better. And I just died and she could just move on rather than have like ah. Man, I don't think I'll even cry at my own funeral, but I will fucking talk about this. So yeah, I, the I just wanna I don't want that guy to struggle, you know. Not a single day in his <sighs> So when this happened and the boys came and visited me, um, you know, they were like, hey man, when when you're ready, we will be there on your first jump back. I came out here with Black Rifle and uh, even if I couldn't jump, I would still, I, I still love the sport. I still love skydiving and uh, just jumping out of airplanes in general, um, even if it's not me that's doing it. Right away. Yeah. Turn towards the sun, hit a track. track. Got that, like, really got that fucking chest cave in. I already knew, like, okay, I'm not jumping. Um, but, you know, get in the tunnel, like, a little better, um, learn how to compensate for this a little, a little bit more. And then uh, Evan heard, he was like, hey, you're not jumping? I was like, no, I gotta, I gotta wait. Because like, if I went out and jumped right now, I'd, the boys would be pretty fucking pissed. <laughs> you know, they'd be livid. I, I've wanted them to be there for my first jump back. So I called up Bill and I was like, hey man, um, what are chances you might come out here and, um, and jump with me? And he was like, are you ready? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think, I think so. He's like, all right. I'm like, okay, um, hold on. He called my wife. Clint wants to do this. She's like, go man. Like. 100% support you, we'll figure it out. So I called Marcus, I called Selwyn, and then I started getting pictures of him in the tunnel, and, and Marcus was like, hey, we're gonna do that. What's Clint doing? I'm like, he's gonna jump, dude, he's gonna jump on Friday, you wanna go? He's like, I'll pick you up at the airport. We called Selwyn, we called TJ, uh, we called Tony, Clint, uh, the other Clint, 
is up in Salt Lake City. He's like, I'm driving down. So he drove 11 hours. I flew from New York City. Uh, Selwyn flew from North Carolina. And we all just kind of descended on here. It's pretty cool that, that um, you know, each one of these guys were willing to like stop what they were doing and come out, come out and, you know, be there with me when I go out the airplane again. It says a lot about those kinds of, those guys. It says a lot about them. We got um, Bill, Marcus, TJ, uh, Clint, and Selwyn. We can all three poise together. You can roll, roll, you go on our neck, you can fuck a whole lot like this and safer, fucking get step on off, you know? <laughs> you just, We're gonna grab you by your fucking, by your stump over there and swing so you around. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta <laughs> 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 Haley's comment, right? <laughs> like, what we'll uh, crashed into the fucking... Whatever you wanna do, bro. <laughs> whatever you wanna do. We all put down like, hey, something happens, like, who, who do you want us to call? And I've shit for most of my career. Bill Smith has been that name. Uh, so TJ Hammond's uh, one of the greatest human beings on earth. Um, learned a great deal from him, especially, especially free falling. <sighs> my man, the apex, um, I call him the apex, but uh, Marcus McCowey. Your base to final. Okay, so my downwind would be from the same. Oh, that's if we're landing. Yeah. That's if we're coming yeah. in landing. Yes. Just another incredible human. I went to sniper school with him back, way back in the day. My good buddy, uh, Clint, uh, he's the other Clint. He epitomizes what a warrior is to me. We weren't in the mill together, but like Selwyn is, a, is an absolute sky god. And he was, uh, he was our coach. Clint, I think, can inspire a generation of warfighters that might have been more fortunate to come out with all of their arms and legs and fingers and toes to go out and push their physical limits even further. And then those that have those have been physically altered by the war, they can do the same. So that is the most pinnacle and mission focused aspect of this. Ready, set, go. Well, all right. So as soon as we're off that hill, okay? As soon as we're off that hill and we feel good, we're, we're poised, we're flying big, man, him. All right, we're just gonna let him go, let him slide on out. So get to slot position, I'll stay at 12 o'clock. Let's, let's have a fucking inner. The only thing we can't replicate is the actual landing itself. Everything comes open, slider, open up chest harness. Because I've never landed without legs, like that's really the only part that, that gives me any concern. There's a lot of things in there that, that I still have to learn how to compensate in a way where I can do it as efficiently as I used to be able to do it. Because, you know, I don't have my drivers anymore, um, my legs. It's learning how to fly um, just different, uh, using parts of my body that I, I didn't really, uh, I didn't use as well uh, before. Looking for the green, all right? We're gonna, okay, 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 ready, okay. set, go! Yeah, I get frustrated. I get frustrated sometimes because I remember what I used to be good at um, and used to be able to do with relative ease. We don't put his shoulder, yeah. his arms over our shoulders until the last minute. Like, we can all hold him, have a couple of eyes yeah. on him. I swear, ever since Clint got hurt, his dream was to do the job again, right? And I think if you know Clint, you know that everything he does is about bettering himself. Three. Oh, okay. that? Way Better? Fuck That's that. how we do yeah. it. And then we'll just go up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got that. We always yeah, wanted to make sure that Clint got back yeah. to where he was when he started, right? Back to where he was the day that he got hurt.
today is that first step, man. And fucking people like Clint are a national treasure for our fucking country, man. The things that you're willing to do and that you've done and your resolve is fucking amazing. And you're a shining fucking example for everything. So I think, I think today, if you, if you look back to the time you were hurt and you're sitting in that bed and you're like, man, everything that I had is fucking gone. It's not. It's right here. And it's right here in front of you. And that's your new fucking purpose. I'm proud of him because he didn't take the easy way out. He didn't kill himself. He wakes up every day and he's a father of four. He's a husband. He's involved with Black Rifle Coffee now, trying to reinvent himself. So fuck yeah, I'm proud of him.